One of the things I love about Obsidian is that you can make it do just about anything that you want. Using community plugins, you can extend the functionality of the app and craft your own productivity and creativity workflows exactly the way that you want, which is perfect if you're particular about things like I am. The problem is that there are a ton of plugins to choose from. As I record this, there are 1,678 plugins available in the community plugins directory. I currently use only 46 of them, which still is a lot by some people's standards. So in this video, I wanna share a complete list of all my Obsidian plugins and what I use them for, and I'll break them down by category so you can figure out which ones you may want to add to your own Obsidian workflows. But before we get into the details of my Obsidian setup, a word of caution here. Don't try to add a whole bunch of plugins at once. Add one at a time with intention and see if that plugin really improves your workflows before you decide if you're gonna keep it. Now, a couple of things happen when you add multiple plugins at once. Number one, you end up adding unnecessary clutter and complexity to your system. And number two, it ends up being hard to troubleshoot if something goes wrong. So for example, one of the first recommended troubleshooting steps if something goes sideways in Obsidian is to toggle off any recently installed plugins. But if you add five at a time, how do you know which one is causing the issue? So add them one at a time and add them specifically because you think they're going to do something that's gonna benefit either your productivity or creativity workflows. Your goal should be to keep Obsidian as lean as possible. Only add the things that have a net positive effect on your productivity or your creativity. So in other words, everything, including Obsidian, should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. Okay, so now that I've got the disclaimer out of the way, let's get into the nerdy details of my Obsidian setup. The first category of plugins are major new features. These are big plugins that fundamentally change the way that I use Obsidian. These plugins are incredibly powerful, but they also have a pretty steep learning curve. They can help you take your Obsidian workflows to new heights, but they require that you know what you're doing first. Number one, data view. I use data view to visualize metadata for my notes. For example, I've got a query that shows me the ratings of all my book notes in descending order. I also use DataView for creating lists of related files for person notes, like a list of notes from coaching calls for a particular person. Number two, projects. I use projects to track all of my newsletters and all of my YouTube scripts. I have projects set up by folder that use the board view to track projects as they go from idea to backlog to in progress to done. Number three, tasks. I use tasks to manage all of my personal tasks inside of Obsidian. I capture tasks to a single note called master task list, and then I use code blocks in canvas cards to create my own task management dashboard. Once you get a handle on crafting the queries, you can visualize your tasks just about any way that you want and create functionality that rivals a lot of expensive task managers like OmniFocus or Things. The next category of plugins are handy utilities. These plugins are all useful little utilities that do one specific thing to improve my Obsidian workflows. Number four, Commander. Obsidian is slowly adding things to the default settings that allow you to customize parts of the user interface. For example, you can now edit the ribbon by going to Settings and then Appearance. But if you want real control of what goes where, you need Commander. This plugin allows you to add commands to the title bar, the page header, the file menu, the ribbon, the contextual menu, or the status bar. You can even add commands to the mobile toolbar. Number five, Mononote. I use a lot of tabs, and I feel a little bit of shame every time I realize that I have the same note open in multiple tabs, which happens more than I'd care to admit. But I found that I can prevent this by using the Mononote plugin, which automatically closes the new tab and jumps to the open one whenever I try to open a currently open note in a new tab. Number six, Tab Navigator. Speaking of tabs, it can be easy to lose things when you have a bunch of tabs open at once. So I use the Tab Navigator plugin, which allows me to search the open tabs to find the one that I want via a simple tab switcher interface. Number seven, Share Note. Sharing notes in Obsidian is a little complicated. Yes, you can export the note as a PDF, but if you want to share something quickly, this is a little slow. So often I use the share note plugin instead to upload the note to an encrypted web server so I can quickly paste the URL to the note into messages or Slack. Number eight, style settings. 
The Style Settings plugin allows you to change the appearance settings of Obsidian plugins and add-ons that support it. Now, there are only a couple of things that tie in here, like Note Toolbar, List Callouts, and Canvas Candy, but this plugin makes changing the appearance settings for those add-ons much easier. Number nine, Tag Wrangler. If you use tags a lot in Obsidian, you need Tag Wrangler. This plugin allows you to update a tag by right-clicking on it in the list of tags located in the right sidebar, then the plugin will find all instances of that tag and update it everywhere in your Obsidian Vault. Number 10, WordPress. I do all of my writing in Obsidian, but almost all of my websites are built on WordPress. So I use the WordPress plugin to automatically send a draft of the post to the website where I then will log in and double check things before scheduling it for publication. Number 11, writing goals. I used to write everything in Ulysses, but eventually got tired of the occasional non-standard markdown syntax. But one of the things that I missed was the writing goals that Ulysses gave you. And while it isn't exactly the same, I've been able to replace a lot of what I missed in Ulysses with the writing goals plugin. Number 12, callout manager. I use callouts heavily in my Obsidian notes, including several custom callouts that I've created using this callout manager plugin. This allows you to create your own callouts by picking a color and icon for your custom callout types and then adding them to the list of callouts available in Obsidian. The next category of plugins is editor enhancements. These plugins all make the Obsidian editor just a little bit more functional in my opinion. Number 13, better word count. Yes, Obsidian has a built-in word count plugin, but honestly, I've turned it off and I use better word count instead because better word count can show me the number of words or characters in a highlighted section of text, as well as the entire note. Number 14, callout suggestions. Callouts in Obsidian are great, but it can be a pain trying to remember all of the different types of callouts that are available when you create them. So I use callout suggestions, which allows me to use fuzzy search when adding callouts to a note, including all of my custom callouts added from the callout manager plugin mentioned previously. Number 15, checklist reset. I use a lot of checklists in Obsidian and I link to them in line in my tasks. Once I'm done going through the checklist, the checklist reset plugin gives me a command that I can use to reset the entire checklist at once so it's ready to go for next time. Number 16, footnote shortcut. The footnote shortcut plugin makes adding footnotes a lot easier, allowing you to create a numbered or named footnote and then immediately jump down to the bottom of the note so that you can add the contents of your footnote there. Number 17, language tool integration. I've used Grammarly for a while, but using it in Obsidian is really annoying. Those green bubbles seem to always be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Fortunately, there's another web service called Language Tool, which gives you quite a bit for free, and the Language Tool integration plugin adds a much less annoying grammar checker into the Obsidian editor. Number 18, Media Notes. If you take notes on YouTube videos like this one, then the Media Notes plugin allows you to not only embed the video in the header of the note, but also add linked timestamps to the note itself. This allows you to click the linked timestamp in the note and have the video jump to the appropriate section, which makes reviewing notes from these videos much easier. Number 19, reading time. Another thing I missed from Ulysses was the estimated reading time for a note. Fortunately, I've been able to add this back to the status bar by using the reading time plugin. Number 20, soundscapes. I like to listen to focus music when I'm writing, and most of the time I do this via the HomePod in my office. But when I'm out and about, I use the Soundscapes plugin, which plays background music while I'm writing in Obsidian. The next section of plugins are Canvas add-ons. These are all plugins that add additional features to Obsidian Canvas, which is Obsidian's built-in Infinite Canvas app. Number 21, Advanced Canvas. I use the Advanced Canvas plugin to add additional card shapes and connection types to Obsidian Canvas, like dotted lines, ovals, and parallelograms. Being able to change these via additional menu options makes it easy to dial in the look of my Obsidian Canvas. Number 22, Canvas Keyboard Pan. Some of my Canvas files are pretty big and navigating them can be a pain. So I use the Canvas Keyboard Pan plugin, which allows me to move around my Canvas by using keyboard hotkeys instead of trying to use the mouse. Number 23, Canvas Send to Back. When you have lots of things on your canvas, it can be difficult to lay things out in a proper order. 
So I use the Canvas Send to Back plugin, which gives you a contextual menu option to send a specific card forward or back on your Obsidian Canvas. Number 24, Simple Canvas Search. You can't search the contents of your canvas using the built-in search command, which is unfortunate. So I use the Simple Canvas Search plugin, which allows you to search for and jump to text anywhere in your Obsidian Canvas. The next category of plugins are appearance upgrades. These are plugins that give Obsidian a visual upgrade and make it just a little bit nicer to use in my opinion. Number 25, Banners. I use the Banners plugin to add a banner to my home note in Obsidian. The banner image here has significance for me and is a reminder to lean into using Obsidian for creative purposes. Number 26, Beauty tab. You know those browser extensions that show you a pretty nature photo instead of a blank page whenever you open a new tab in your web browser? That's basically what Beauty tab does. Every time you open a new tab in Obsidian, it shows you a photo from a category that you've selected, like lakes, forests, mountains, etc. Number 27, List Callouts. I use the List Callouts plugin to add a dash of color to my book notes. This plugin uses rules to add colored highlights to lines that start with certain characters, like the emoji that I use to code my book notes. Number 28, Painter. I like to highlight my text occasionally using different colors, and I currently use the Painter plugin to do this. I like Painter because you can create your own colors and you can control the style of the highlights in the plugin settings. Number 29, Query Control. I've never been a big fan of the visual rendering of queries in Obsidian. So I use a beta plugin called Query Control that allows me to tweak the appearance of queries in a way that I actually like. And if you want to see this in action, then check out my quotebook video by clicking the link here. The next category of plugins are plugins that complement the built-in daily notes feature. I use date-based notes a ton in Obsidian, and these are all plugins that are essential for my daily notes workflows. Number 30, Calendar. If you use daily notes, you should be using the calendar plugin as it makes navigating your daily notes much easier. This plugin adds a clickable calendar in the right sidebar that instantly jumps to the appropriate daily note. Number 31, periodic notes. In addition to daily notes, I use the periodic notes plugin to create weekly notes and quarterly notes inside of Obsidian. Just like the built-in daily notes, this plugin lets you choose a template for each type of note and a location where they should be stored. This plugin is essential for the multi-scale planning that I do in Obsidian, which is explained in this YouTube video. Number 32, Charts. The Charts plugin is actually really powerful, but I only use it for one specific thing, and that is adding a wheel of life to my quarterly notes as part of my personal retreat process. By the way, you can see my whole personal retreat process in this YouTube video and download my personal retreat template. Number 33, Note Toolbar. I use the Note Toolbar plugin to add a custom toolbar to the top of the notes in my Daily Notes folder. You can add any commands to the sticky toolbar, but I just have today's Daily Note, the next Daily Note, and the previous Daily Note, and I can navigate between the notes by clicking on these buttons. Number 34, Force Note View Mode. I track several things on my Daily Note, but some of them don't get logged correctly if the note isn't in reading mode. So I use Force Note View Mode to automatically open all notes in the Daily Notes folder in reading mode by default. Number 35, Quick Add. I have several sections in my Daily Note for journal entries, gratitude, wins, etc. And I use capture macros via the Quick Add plugin to capture things to the appropriate section from anywhere in my Obsidian Vault. I also use a capture macro to open the Obsidian Tasks API, giving me a Quick Add window like any other dedicated task manager. Number 36, Review. I have a review section in my daily note and I use the review plugin to add notes to this section for future dates when I want to review them. Number 37, Natural Language Dates. The Natural Language Dates plugin complements the review plugin that I just mentioned and allows you to use natural dates when selecting the next review date. Number 38, Tracker. I use a different type of journaling called daily questions, which I explain in this YouTube video here where I rate my intentions and I give each tag a score. Then I use the Tracker plugin to visualize those scores during my personal retreat process when determining what changes I want to make for the next quarter. I also use this to visualize a couple of habits that I track in a custom callout on my daily note. Number 39, 
Pinboard Sync. When I'm browsing the web and I find a link that I want to keep, I save it to a service called Pinboard. The Pinboard Sync plugin will also automatically add those links to a section in my daily note. The next section of plugins is all really nerdy stuff. These are all plugins that are related to automation and inter-app workflows. Number 40, Brat. In addition to installing the query control plugin listed above, I use the Brat plugin to run and test a couple of beta plugins. This is by far the easiest way to install and manage those beta plugins. Number 41, Custom Frames. There are a couple of web apps that I prefer to open in Obsidian tabs rather than jumping back and forth between my web browser, like ChatGPT, Notebook LM, etc. So I use the Custom Frames plugin to add these into Obsidian so I don't have to switch back and forth. Number 42, Custom Window Title. I use the Timing app to automatically track and categorize the time that I spend on my Mac. By using the Custom Window Title plugin, Timing can actually look at what notes are open, and I can use that data to create rules and track time appropriately. And this is an essential plugin because I want to have accurate time tracking data since I use Obsidian for so many use cases. Number 43, Actions URI. I have a shortcut that I use for logging my daily questions that uses Actions for Obsidian. So I have the Actions URI plugin installed to help provide a couple of additional hooks that make this workflow possible. If you want to see that shortcut in action, then check out this YouTube video. Number 44, Advanced URI. I use the Advanced URI plugin to add even more automation possibilities like opening and editing files, navigating to headings, and calling commands via URL schemes. Number 45, Templater. I use the Templater plugin to apply certain templates automatically whenever I create a new note in specific folders. For example, I automatically add my book notes template when I create a note inside of the book notes folder using Templater. Number 46, Book Search. I use the Book Search plugin in conjunction with Templater to add the book image to new notes in my book notes folder. I don't use any of the other metadata options though because I don't really like how they're formatted. So there you have it, a complete breakdown of every Obsidian plugin that I have installed and what I use that plugin for. And hopefully this list gives you some inspiration for your own Obsidian workflows. Just remember not to go too crazy and to be intentional about the plugins that you decide to add. And if you like this video and you want more Obsidian tips, templates, and resources, then download my free Obsidian Starter Vault by going to practicalpkm.com vault. My Starter Vault includes a bunch of templates, tips, and additional resources like a markdown reference guide, a callout reference guide, links to my daily questions journaling shortcut, and a whole lot more to help you make more of your notes and ideas in Obsidian. Once again, you can download that starter vault for free by going to practicalpkm.com slash vault. And if you want some help applying values-based PKM principles to be more productive and creative, then you should check out my newsletter. I send out that newsletter every Monday and it always includes an original essay, a link to something cool that's usually Obsidian related, and my personal notes from a different self-help or productivity book that I've read recently. You can sign up for the newsletter for free by going to practicalpkm.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in another video.